Hi, and welcome to a tutorial on introducing the turning point formula to help us or assist us in graphing quadratics. You'll recall that quadratics in this form can be sketched, and typically we use three uh, points of interest to help us with them. They tend to be the x-intercepts, if they're present, the y-intercept, and the turning point. So this tutorial will focus on using this particular formula which helps us locate the x-coordinate of the turning point. And it's very, very helpful when the graph has no x-intercepts. So let's look at an example. I've chosen here a graph, or sorry, an equation, which basically does not uh, factorise easily. As a result, I'm going to have to use the general quadratic equation to help solve for its turning points, if in fact there are turning points. So there's the general quadratic equation, and you'll recognise that A has a value of 2, B has a value of 4, and C has a value of 9. Substituting now in for those values, Now I'll stop here just for a sec to allow us to examine what we call the discriminant. So, highlighting here, what is in here within the, uh, the square root sign is actually referred to as discri the discriminant. Now if the discriminant, I'll see if I can change colours, if the discriminant, no luck at all, is less, that should be an n in there, is less than zero, that implies that our, our little expression here or equation doesn't actually solve. For example, at this point in our education, we know that we just can't take the square root of a negative number. It just doesn't solve. So in other words, we have no solutions to this. And that basically is what we put down here. There are no solutions. In reality, what it means is that, that our expression that we've got up here, or equation up here, doesn't cross the x-axis. So we've got no x-intercepts. So we press on, and we look to see if we can find the y-intercept. Now our y-intercept occurs when x equals 0. So by substituting in for 0 in the original equation, we will find that our y-intercept actually equals 9. So that can be placed as our first point on the graph. Pressing on now for our turning point. Now previously, we would have found the x-coordinates and then taken the average of those, that is the middle point. Because there is no solutions, or no point where the graph actually cuts the x-axis, we are forced, I guess, to actually use this alternative method, the one introduced previously. So we substitute for values of b and a, as seen already. And you can see that our x value is negative 1. We then substitute that in to the original equation, and that helps us find the y, the corresponding y point. So our turning point is going to be negative 1, 7. So going back up to our where we've been sketching on our Cartesian plane. There's negative 1. 7 would be approximately at this point. We mark that in. We mark in the axes as y and x. And we join our dots. You'll notice here 
that we have a happy graph because looking at our original equation, the coefficient of the x squared term was a positive. So we know we're going to have that cup-shaped graph or the happy graph looking at that. So in the absence of any solutions, any x-intercepts, the use of the turning point formula allows us to locate the turning point and together with the y-intercept we can now sketch our graph. Okay, thanks for listening.